So to get across the data that we can expect this week and what is driving markets, I caught up with Peter McGuire from XN. When you're looking at it, S&P, I can't believe it, up 1.5% up and you had boom to the upside 2% for NASDAQ or 2.05. So yeah, it's been a very strong two weeks for US equities. Had a little bit of a pullback, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, but certainly off to the races again Friday. All Interesting right. how into this week here. Yeah, absolutely. Well, look, we are expecting a, a higher opening locally, so we'll see whether we do get that leg up from from Wall Street. Let's take a look at the overall performance of uh, those uh, assets just to see where we're at at the moment. How would you sum this up, Pete? Well, you've had a really big move to the upside as far as energy prices. They bounced from that WTI from about $75 a barrel, Andrew, and it was very, very strongly bid up, uh, up 1.89%. Brent was up 1.77%. And then you're looking at the currencies as far as US dollar and then the cross rates, euro versus G, um, British pound, euro versus yen. So you've had a bit of strengthening across those um, with the euro and uh, weakness on those other markets. All right. So um, let's first then take a look at what we're seeing in the States at the moment. Now, look, um, overall, uh, pretty data heavy week, isn't it? So lot, lots to look forward to. Clearly out of the States, the key is going to be consumer prices followed by producer prices. Yeah, exactly right. You know, and you've got that, um, as, as far as the Atlanta Fed numbers, I'm looking at that. I mean, that's a good gauge to see. You certainly won't see uh, as strong as what you saw in that third quarter, the fourth quarter, uh, pardon me, in, the, in that other quarter. Uh, estimates 2.1% annualised growth. So where is the Fed going to play as far as rate rises? And we've just got to see all of the, I think, all the moving parts associated with, you know, Fed policy and uh, how the end of 23 rolls. And do we see, you know, maybe a lift off in December or, you know, is it next year for another round of rate rises? Well, I mean, just taking a look at that chart there, look, sort of expectations perhaps that they may see the first round of rate cuts by May. What are your well, thoughts, Pete? Yeah, well, look, look, there's every chance, Andrew, but I think we've just got to see how it is as far as the stickiness with inflation, whether that um, goes against consensus and, you know, we've just got to wait for the numbers really to drop. Uh, everyone would like to see rate cuts and there's no doubting that on Main Street and we've just got to, you know, get through, I think, um, how the Christmas side is and then looking at the first quarter and maybe it is going to happen around that Easter period. We've just got to see how everything, a lot of water to pass under the bridge between now and then, Andrew. Absolutely. Pete, what are you seeing out of the UK at the moment, particularly in terms of wage growth, of course? Um, look, the economy is struggling. Yeah, what, how are you seeing so. that look there? Well, you, if you're looking at company prices, Andrew, they've been strongly accelerated to a three-month high in October. And, uh, you know, investors see a, probably a 15% probability of another rate hike by the Bank of England. So there's that side of it. As far as pounds concerned, it's still languishing at around that, you know, 1.22 sort of level. But, yeah, they've just got to work through those inflation numbers and see if they can pull them back. And, uh, you know, you look at the chart there, it's, it really does tell the story. And you look at that yellow well, or the golden line there year on year, it's still very, very strong. All right. Uh, China, of course, remains in focus um, on speculation as to whether we have seen the bottom there in terms of uh, economic growth. Some more, I guess, more recent figures showing some positivity there. How are you looking at, at China, Pete? Because we do get that well, data dump this week. Yes, we certainly do get that data dump. And you've got also the meeting between uh, President Xi and President Biden at APEC in um, in San Francisco and over the next few days. But the other side is where we look forward, Andrew. Uh, what's happening as far as China? Is there going to be, you know, another round of some form of stimulus? We understand those uh, export numbers that came through last Tuesday or Wednesday. They were very, very poor as far as, you know, the growth in exports. So, you know, it's got to be internally driven and we all understand the property sector there and just waiting to see how everything rolls and whether what policy statements China is prepared to do. Will we see, you know, a, a, a further rate, uh, a cut in key rate, uh, you know, and we've got to understand those slowing economic uh, growth numbers coming out of there. All right. So let's then focus on what we're going to see locally this week. Once again, quite a bit of data to go on. Uh, critically, I guess the key numbers will come on Wednesday with the wage price yeah. index for the September quarter. And then, uh, then we get also some, um, some labor data for October. What are the expectations there, Pete? 
Well, the, I think the other, and moving on from that, Andrew, I mean, in addition, you're seeing if it's stronger than expected as far as, uh, you know, from an unemployment side, uh, do we see, you know, it's a toss of the coin now as far as about a 50-50 for a rate hike in December. So that's where that side of it's looking. Um, we've just got to see those numbers as far as unemployment and, uh, you know, the stickiness of the job market. Uh, you know, we wait for the numbers to drop. We'll just see where they roll. Unemployment rate resting at historically low levels. And, you know, understand as far as uh, rental, you're looking at, uh, you know, house prices and all of those sort of factors. So, uh, you know, if it's going to be stronger than expected numbers, they point to a December rate hike and, uh, you know, probably a push up to the Aussie dollar. Yeah, it's a difficult one to read at the moment, isn't it? I guess particularly with the um, the immigration rate at near historic highs and how yes. that's impacting the labour market at the moment. Well, exactly right, you know, and so that's another concern, Andrew. More people, um, you would hope, is more consumption, more jobs and in turn, you know, better GDP and the whole, all of those factors that roll across it. Uh, though there is a critical shortage as far as housing and so, you know, that's the, that's the next part of the journey. Uh, it's all right to win, to have all of these wonderful people come to our shores, but we've got to house them as well, and mm. they've got to, you know, have somewhere to live, and hopefully we can manage that. So I think there's plenty of growth for Australia over the next few years as far as building and construction. Okay, Pete, let's check out what's going on in the commodities complex. Then uh, we, you, you mentioned oil earlier. There uh, did move higher, particularly on Friday. A bit of news there because Iraq making a point there that it's looking. We're encouraging uh, further supply cuts. This is as we head into the next OPEC Plus meeting later this month. Yeah, exactly, in Vienna. And that'll be uh, towards the tail end of the month, Andrew. And yeah, so I'm conscious of those numbers as far as Iraq and their concerns. Uh, oils, uh, I think it probably has bottomed. It was possibly oversold. It bounced, certainly. And uh, let's just see where it, well, it oscillates. It's, if you're not seeing, I think that war premium out of Israel is, dissipate and take a lot of that war premium out of the price. So we've just got to see what happens over the next matter of leading up to Christmas again, as far as supply side and consumption. And if there's no geopolitical that's going to spark it up, then possibly oil will stay around that 75 to 80, 82, $83 barrel. And Pete, gold certainly lost momentum. I think it came off about 3% yeah. last week. So where to from here, do you think? I'll possibly give up. I mean, you know, the long term, Andrew, I think is going to be very much stronger and it's, uh, I, I don't see it, you know, capitulating, but it's certainly volatile. And uh, from a trading perspective, yes, it goes up and it goes down. And, uh, you know, I'm having a look also as far as US dollar. Uh, I, I just think at the moment, um, yeah, hold on to your hat because I'm expecting even more volatility across that uh, precious metal sector. And Pete, one of the best performing risk assets has been Bitcoin. <laughs> Let's yeah. take a look at it. Uh, quite incredible, the turnaround. What are you seeing here? Up 122% for the year, Andrew, since January 1, 35% up since October 1. And it's just been, yeah, showtime. I mean, the chart tells a story. Um, you know, the introduction of ETFs, people have, someone's buying it. And, uh, you know, and it's certainly been bid up and bid up strongly. Uh, I think it was nearly at 38,400 the other day. Uh, so there's very, a lot of momentum to the upside and it's sitting at around about 37,200 at the moment. So you have a look at the chart, have a look at it above those moving averages. And uh, yeah, it's uh, th there's no shortage of volatility, Andrew, and that market certainly doesn't ever sleep. Yeah, I'm looking at that chart. So where's the next resistance level that you're looking at then, then Pete? Oh, I think you'd have to look at it. I mean, look look how strongly, I mean, that's parabolic what we've seen mm. since that October number. It's just basically straight up. So, you know, is it going to continue that uptick? Andrew is 40,000. You've got to say, you know, is 40 and a half thousand where you're going to see some form of, uh, you know, maybe resistance. Um, it's a market all to its own and any market that's up 122% in, you know, 10 months, uh, it's very much on fire. So we've just got to see whether that continues. And it's, uh, yeah, that's certainly exciting for our traders. 